afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, this webinar, which is um, a walk through the ANU application process for this year. Um, we'll get started properly in a, in a few moments. We'll just give everyone a chance to get connected. Um, this session will be recorded. Um, so certainly if you need uh, a refresher on anything that we cover, um, we can make that link uh, available to you afterwards. Um, we do. We are able to also answer any questions that you have, um, and you can enter those through the Q and A section. Um, so we'll just give it another few moments while people are getting connected. All right, those numbers look pretty good. So we will get started. Um, so my name is Francis. I am part of the. Um, domestic student recruitment team at the ANU. Um, this session really is a chance for you to see the application process. We'll do a bit of a walk through it so that you can see where you enter all the, the really basic um, details and your documents. Um, you do have the opportunity to, uh, to ask any questions. You can put your questions into the Q&A section. Um, I would encourage you to, to sort of watch at least most of the presentation um, to start with, because we may answer your question as we go. Um, and if we can't answer your question, if it's a, a bit specific to one of the, um, the particular areas like accommodation or scholarships, um, we'll make a note of that question. And we certainly encourage you to then come along to our future sessions. We've got webinars obviously coming up in the next few weeks about scholarships and about accommodation, um, where we can really get into those parts of the application in more detail. Um, so uh, I will start this session um, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, um, wherever you all are, um, and paying my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Um, so I'm here with my colleague, Kathy Meng from our domestic admissions team, um, and I will hand over to her to talk us through this, pre this application. Cool, oh, thank you, Francis. So if, hi everyone, um, I'm Cathy from the uh, Domestic Missions team. So we will mainly uh, go through the application, but before we go into the application, I wanted to talk about the key application and offer timeline. Um, so you have an idea of the key dates. So I'm going to share my screen now. <coughs> So here, let me put in the screen, full screen, yes. So here you can say, uh, oops, we should go back. This is the one. Um, so here you can see currently applications are open. Uh, the deadline to apply is 24th of May, 2021. But you know, if you have everything ready, you have the documents you need and you've uploaded those, you've completed the application, I would encourage you to apply, like submit your application ASAP. So we have time to review your application and if we need any documentation or if we need any further information from you, then we can contact you and you still have time to provide those documents to us. Um, so now you can say uh, we will make once you've uh, submitted your application and by 24th of May, um, our team will then start looking at your assessment application and then um, finalize the, the three components of this direct application. The early offers we are looking at releasing that on 9th of August and you have roughly a month or four weeks to accept your offer by 6th of September. And this is the whole uh, package offer, which might include, you know, accommodations, uh, scholarships, if you um, are eligible, and also the academic one, of course. Then, um, as you also like, we'll just move back a little bit for 24th of May. Uh, this is also the deadline for you to add the Bachelor of Health Science as a program, as a preference. If you want it to be considered for this program, you must add this program by 24th of May. 
um, from 25th of May onwards, you can't add this program um, into your direct application. The deadline is 24th. Now on 1st of October, um, we will, because we've done, you know, we, you've accepted your offer and then we will reopen the change of preference for most of our programs, but except for Bachelor of Health Science, which we've already said it closed on 24th of May. Uh, this is also the time we will reopen the document upload functionality. So if there are, if we need any further documents from you, or if you didn't, if you don't provide the documents by the deadline, this is the time that you can um, provide additional documents to us, to the direct application. Um, and on 10th of November, this is the deadline like the last day that you can add a Bachelor of Visual Arts or Bachelor of Design as a preference because these two program has um, interviews um, and the portfolio requirements. They're, therefore, they do have an earlier closing date. Then it comes 30th of November. This is the deadline for you to, to um, provide any additional documents. Um, and from 1st of December, you won't be able to provide any additional documents to your direct application. So keep this date um, in your mind to make sure you do that before uh, this date. 30th of November is also the deadline for you to add all of our Bachelor of Philosophy programs as a preference. Um, again, these three programs, they also have additional supplementary form that you must complete and the deadline is also 30th of November. Then um, you will have the um, 18th of December. Uh, that's the change of preference deadline for all other programs uh, other than those, you know, closed earlier. This is indicative only because we, um, we at the moment, we are not 100% sure, you know, when the results are going to be released for the end of the year. Uh, so the date can change depending on how we go with the results release. Similar to the um, offer release dates. So currently we're looking at 23rd of December um, and also 7th of January. This is where we would either confirm your early offer you received in August, or if you have changed your preference, then we will replace the early offer with a new offer uh, that you can accept. So you can all only have one valid offer in the system. So make sure, you know, when you're considering the preferences, make sure you put what you most want to study as your first preference. The deadline to accept um, your offers are 18, is 18th of uh, January 2022. So this is like a very um, key date, very brief key date. So if you have any questions, you know, going forward, if or if you're not sure, these dates are also published on our websites as well. So make sure you check the ANU website to um, look at the most up-to-date information. Now we will go to the um, application system. So first you would go to the ANU website um, here. So when then you can start study or click study and click apply to ANU. And here you can select, like you can say we have domestic international, um, they have slightly different application uh, process or methods. So for domestic students, you would click here, domestic applications. And because we are talking about direct application, so now go apply direct. This is also the page you can find all of the relevant information about direct application. So who can apply? Um, here you go, scroll down and you can say, you know, like the adjustment factors, 
or how to apply admission process, which might which will also include key dates and co-curricular services and scholarships and accommodation. Everything you need to know about the RAC application will be published on this website. So once you're ready, you have an idea of what you are going to um, apply, so now apply direct. Here you can say, um, you can actually, first let's, if you haven't registered, of course, your new applicant, then click apply now. And this is where um, you need to uh, use an email to register for an account. Uh, we don't recommend you use this school email address because the application process start from now and it will finish next year, right, by January next year. Um, at that time, you might no longer have access to your school email address. So please don't use your school email address. Instead, use a personal email address that you have access to and you remember the password. Uh, the other option is you can register with social media account. But again, remember um, either ANU or UAC. UAC is the, um, the provider of this application system. They, they support ANU for the assessments and the applications. We, don't, we would never have access to your uh, social media account login details. So if you forget these details, we won't be able to help you I'll reset them. So if you do actually, um, you know, things can happen and if you forget your details, those type of things, ideally or prefer or easily, you know, use your personal email address that you remember your password so you can just register. Um, because I have already registered for an account, so what I'm going to do, once you've registered, uh, then you can, uh, just logging here. So I've registered and I'm going to log in now. It will still ask you to complete, like before you start, this is where you complete whether you are a citizen or you are a permanent resident. Um, here, this is here, you complete this section and then whether you are doing Australian Year 12 or IB November session, this is to make sure you can actually apply uh, direct. Applicants who are not doing um, Australian Year 12 or IB diploma November session, uh, they should apply via University Mission Centre rather than uh, the direct application. The direct application is only for this cohort. So click yes. And I don't need this information. If you do have your uh, student number and PIN you receive directly from University's Admission Centre, put that information in so then the system might be able to uh, get your results directly from the source. Uh, for interstate students, if you don't have this information, leave it blank. Um, you can then continue your application. So continue. Ah, uh, and here, this is the personal information section. Then I'll just put in details here, uh, your name. Um, and to make sure if you have used a previous name, then you put it here. Uh, gender and date of birth, make sure this is correct. Citizenship details. Okay, I need to move this a little bit. Okay, and your nationality, 
if you wanted to nominate someone to act on your behalf or if you wanted to authorize like mom or dad to have access to your application uh, so they can talk to us if they have any questions then in that case uh, make sure you add their details in so that we when you call us we can discuss your application with mom or dad um, if you don't want to of course put no here. Um, you can always log back into the application system um, if you are not sure whether you wanted to give access to someone. Um, you can change this section later, even if after you submitted your application. It is also important how we contact you. So this is where all of the correspondence for example, if we are going to issue an, you an early offer, this is where the early offer will go to. Or if we, can't, we need further documentation from you, this is where we will send those correspondence to this email address. You don't, um, it, this doesn't have to be the same as the one you registered for application. It can be a different one. But make sure this is again, uh, one of the email that you have access to. Contact number, so it needs to be 10 digits. And your address. And if your um, residential address is the same as your postal address, then click same. This is where you put um, government, like it's for government reporting related questions. So enter your details here. Kathy, we mm -hmm. seem to not be seeing the right screen. Oh, sorry. Can... Which screen are you saying? We're, we're currently seeing a Zoom launch screen. So maybe if you close that tab. Right, okay, sorry. I'm not sure why. That's better, thank you. Okay, great, I'm really sorry everyone. Okay, so we'll just go like back a little bit. Did you see the uh, screen uh, where you can register your application or register the applicant details? Yes, yeah. We only sort of missed out on the last little bit where you were talking about um, phone and address. Yep, yeah, from about there. Right, okay, okay, good. So now this is the government statistics that we need to enter. Um, then the next question is, about whether you need support services during your studies. Uh, so if you, if you do need any support um, for the studies or if there's a disability or illness that we, you will require support, um, you can include this information here. It's not going to impact the application. It's a separate process, but it's more to make sure that the university uh, support team, like we have an access and inclusion team, that they can support you better when you are um, on campus study. So I'm going to put no. Then uh, this is because you can uh, apply for five programs, uh, but this is more um, in case you're not successful for any of your um, degree preferences that whether you wanted to be considered for alternate study options. If you want, if yes, then put this information. Then we, when we are looking at that application, if you're not eligible for any of your program, but we think that there is an alternate program, which might be similar to the ones you applied for, then we can automatically issue that offer to you instead. Uh, but you can, of course, put in no as well. 
Uh, this is where, like, if you are intending to apply for a scholarship, then make sure you click yes for the scholarship, uh, Takwo scholarship. So the Takwo uh, scholarship team um, is aware that you are you wanted to be considered, and they can contact you for the Takwo application process. So for now, I'm going to say no. Next. So this is where you get your application number. Make sure you keep this application number. So when you are contacting the university, any of our teams, make sure you quote this number so we can always check the details for you easily. Adjustment factors. So this is the section um, as you may aware, for your selection rank. So we calculate, for the early offer, we would calculate your selection rank based, your, based on your year 11 results, plus any equity adjustment factors that you might be eligible for. Um, so here, when for the end of the year, we would also consider your ATAR results, plus any adjustment factors that you are eligible for. So here, if you look at the details, performer adjustments, we um, are looking at AMEB grade eight or higher. Uh, we would automatically um, give you adjustment fact adjustments like the performer adjustments based on this certificate. So if you do make sure you upload a copy of this document. If you do, then also here, put in which, um, which the one that you are specialised in. So I'm going to say performance. Save. And say they will remind you to upload your evidence of AMEB8. Elite athlete. So if you are, um, you know, an elite athlete, then make sure you complete the information here. If you select yes, then it will ask you whether you are, you have presented um, your sport at a state, national or international level during year 11 or year 12. And then you will need to complete the details here and also provide supporting documents. I'm going to say no here. Now this is where the equity adjustment factors, uh, adjustments come in. So we have different categories. You can see disrupted scoring or financial hardships. So for example, if you click this one, there are a few categories within each of the um, uh, disadvantage category. For example, financial hardship here. You can see one is about Centrelink income or payments. Uh, we do also have a uh, job seeker or job keeper because if your parents are uh, receiving or were receiving payments for job keeper or job uh, seeker, then this can be completed here. Again, you will need to upload evidence so then we can assess that. So I'm going to say yes for this one and save. Uh, there are a few other categories, as you can say. Um, so, for example, school environment. Um, so, when you click school environment, there is a school list. Uh, check the school list. If you're one of them, um, then you don't need to apply. It, the system will automatically handle that. So, like, there are family response disruptions. So there are a few of them here as well. Um, we're not going to go into each of the uh, details, but um, when you are applying and completing your application form, make sure you check each of them because you might be eligible for adjustments and that would increase your selection rank. Uh, that would also help you in meeting the requirements for your applicate for your preferred program. Once you've completed the adjustment factor sections, then click next. 
co-curricular activity. So, you know, this is a mandatory requirement that all applicants, uh, all Year 12 applicants to ANU will need to meet. You can have up to a maximum of five activities when you apply. So, put if you're not sure, just put them in so that um, the assessment team can assess and let you know if they need any further documentation. If they assess your application and they think you've already met the requirements, then uh, even if you've claimed more than what you need uh, as part of the application, they're not going to contact you again for documents. But if you've claimed a five, they've assessed and you don't actually meet, meet this co-curricular requirement, then they will contact you um, to, seek, to ask for further documentation. So again, my recommendation would be submit your application as early as possible so that um, the assessment team can assess your application and to contact you as early as possible. Um, so again, as I said, you can have five of them here. And if you are not sure whether you meet the minimum requirements, you can always, you know, check our website, which tell, we'll have the detailed information about what you need and what we would be looking at when assessing the co-curricular requirements. Qualification, this is very important here so you need to tell us which qualification you are doing i know some students might are uh, doing two qualifications concurrently or some might choose uh, some might doing one of the qualifications uh, but just make sure you put the qualification that you are studying if you're doing year 12 then select which stage which curriculum you are doing so say if i'm doing it at act and then put in the name of your school. Again, this is very important because you know, we use your year 11 results to calculate an A and U selection rank for the early offer. So it is critical that we have your the correct school name um, so that we can look at the results. If you know your student number, please make sure you enter your student number here. Again, this would help us to uh, locate your results uh, for the end of the year as well. Um, if you study the same uh, year 11 school, if you study the year 11 at the same school, then click yes. If no, then of course you can add in the year 11 uh, school details as well. Most of the um, year 12 students, if they're studying in Australia, they're domestic students, most of you guys would meet the English requirements automatically, but there are certain, uh, a small group of applicants who might not meet. Um, so therefore then um, it's important that you check the English language policy and say if your year two qualification will make you eligible or meet the English requirement. If not, then this is where you can add in the English qualification details. Okay, then next. Now this is the um, programs. So see, you can see you will receive an offer to your highest eligible preference. So always make sure whichever program you wanted to study the most, put that as your highest of preference. So you're going to be considered in the order of your preferred programs. So say, for example, I wanted to be considered, because I'm not sure, I might just put in an F flexible double degree, because um, that would give me flexibility. I don't need to come back to confirm, uh, I, I don't need to confirm the uh, two degree com combinations until I accept my final offer. 
um, but I do need to actually uh, nominate or indicate which ones I am currently interested. But this doesn't mean that you are locked into this combination. You can uh, later on change the combination. So let's just say I wanted to study FDV engineering. And I'm also interested in health science. And philosophy. Okay. So once you, you know, you can have up to five preferences. Uh, once you have completed, selected five preferences here, you can say um, like each of them, for example, for the flexible double engineering, there is a note here saying you must upload your year 12 semester one report. This is because when we are assessing the early offer, uh, we are also assessing the prerequisite requirement. And for the engineering and events computing group, there is a minimum mass requirement. So in order to get an early offer, you need to first of all, of course, make sure you meet the co-curricular requirement and your uh, selection rank is high enough, but also you also need to meet the prerequisite requirements. So upload a copy of year 12 semester one report. I know some schools might don't have that report ready at this time. In that case, upload um, a copy, like evidence of your year 12 enrollments. This year 12 enrollments must include the subject names that you are studying or you are enrolling, enrolled in year 12. We can't assess your prerequisite based on school subject code because we wouldn't know what subject name that is that is so make sure if you're uploading evidence of year 12 enrollments that evidence does include your uh, subject name bachelor of health science uh, this program has a mandatory supplementary form that you need to compl complete online that's not available you don't need to upload that form here but you need to complete that form separately uh, by the deadline so that you can be considered. If you are a rural or indigenous status applicant, then you can upload that evidence here, but that's optional because it's not, it might not be uh, applicable to everyone, but there is a mandatory document that must be completed uh, by the deadline. Supplementary form for the uh, Bachelor of Philosophy programs, same. So there is a mandatory form, but that form must be uploaded to this application. And you can see it's highlighted in red that it's mandatory requirement. If you don't complete the form, you are not going to get an offer or you're not going to be considered for this program. So make sure you do that if that's your desired um, program preference. Actuary studies, again, similar. It's the year 12 semester one report or year 12 enrollment so that we can assess your prerequisite. Um, Bachelor of Design, there is a mandatory requirement. And again, it's available on the website. You need to complete a separate uh, registration process. It's not within this, this uh, system. So here you can say you've selected uh, a flexible double group and you do need to complete like indicate the two degrees that you wanted to study so click here you can still change this uh, combination and you don't need to confirm until you actually uh, accept your final offer so if say if I wanted to do bachelor of applied data analytics with Bachelor of Engineering, so then I can just add it in. Now next. So once you've completed that, it goes to scholarship section. So if you want it to be considered for scholarship, just click yes. Um, and then you can go to the website to have a look at what scholarships are available.
this is accommodation. So if you want it to be considered for accommodation, then there are a number of questions that you do need to complete. Um, you can select a residence, for example, let me just complete this first. Catered or self-catered. And then you can select a residence. If you have, again, any special requirements, make sure you list the information here. So within this application, there are a few sections that you can provide, you know, whether there's a medical condition or anything, but these are considered separately. So if you want your accommodation application to be considered based on the information, uh, like for example, medical condition, then you must include that information here so that the accommodations team can consider uh, this as part of their allocation process. So there are a few questions here is about income details that you need to complete and emergency contact. This again can be different. So make sure if you want this, uh, you, you make sure you complete this section so accommodation team knows. Authorized to contact, again, um, when, if your emergency contact is not the authorized, con they're not the same, then you can put in the details here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put no, so we can go to the next stage. Once you've completed all of these sections, now you can review all of the details. Make sure you review the information and say and confirm that you have put all of the information that you needed for the application. And then you can just submit. The decoration, again, very important, making sure you everything you put in the application and are true and correct because um, the university can withdraw application if there are information incorrect in this application. And now you can download a copy. which includes all of the uh, application details you submit. I would encourage you to download a copy so you know what um, has been uh, submitted and especially if there are additional documents, you can refer to this as well. Whether year 12 qualification and whether you've applied for accommodation or scholarships. Um, so once you've uh, submitted your application, of course, the team, um, the assessment team will start assessing your application uh, and they will contact you if they need any further documentation or the other thing you can do if you think there's additional documents that you wanted to pr provide, you have up until 28th of May to upload any documents. And you can also refer to the timeline, which will list all of the key dates that we are covered in the earlier 10 minutes of this session. And you can again, you know, manage your application. They're here. So this is where um, if, the, if the assessment team or us contact you for further documentation, you will see that from here, view correspondence. And you can also say you do need to provide documents, uh, additional documents to your application. If you receive an offer in August, um, it's not view correspondence, it's actually click offers. There's an offer tab that you can view your offer here. I think that's it, that's it for the application. And we can go through questions. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions that have come through. And certainly if anyone has any further questions, 
um, please feel free to send them through. So um, we'll start uh, right at the top. So there, there's a question here about um, why would the offer need to be confirmed um, and could it be taken away? So I guess that's to do with the offer that you get in August and then what happens in December. So can you just go over that one again, Cathy? Yeah, of course. So it is really important that you complete your year 12 and, you know, you continue study as hard as you are currently doing, even if you're getting an early offer. Um, for the earliest the August offer, it will be conditional on you completing your year 12 with an ATAR. While we're not looking at a specific ATAR uh, for this conditional offer, but you still need to achieve an ATAR in order to have your offer confirmed in the uh, December and January. And it is important, you know, some of the uh, degree programs you select, um, they do have assumed knowledge or prerequisites. So the studies you are doing in year 12, that would help you uh, achieve better results at university. So it's important that you continue your study. Yeah. Um, probably the other side of that one is that when, if people change their preferences, just being mindful to keep that, that degree that they've been offered in that preference list as well, because that could be where it might drop out as well and, and they'd lose an offer. <laughs> absolutely. You're absolutely right too. So, you know, if you receive an early offer in August, uh, you change your preferences, you remove this program as a preference. And if, or somehow, unfortunately, you're not eligible for any of your preference, then you lose your early offer as well too. So make sure, if even if you're changing your preferences, the early offer is still one of your preference. So you have a backup plan. Um, you know, worst case, you can still have that offer confirmed as long as you complete year 12 within ATAR. But also making sure, if this early offer is the program that you really wanted to study, then this program should be your first preference in your application. Because again, if you change your preference, you get a new offer, your early offer will no longer be there. Yeah, great. All right, um, so there's a question here. Um, will equity adjustments apply for the PhB science degrees? Did you want to talk a little bit about how many equity of points and, and for which <laughs> degrees? Yeah, of course. So our PhD, all of the PhD and Bachelor of Engineering are research and development, Bachelor of Advanced Computing Research and Development Honours uh, programs, they can be considered for equity points, a maximum of five points. So if your year 11 selection rank plus this five or up to five equity adjustments um, is above the minimum requirements, then you will be considered for that program. Um, and same for the end of the year results, you know, if your year 12 uh, ATAR is released, we can also consider equity adjustments for the PHB uh, programs. Great. Um, so the next question is, um, I'm completing the IB in November 2021 session. When submitting my qualifications, do I need to complete the year 11 results form? from the ANU or can I submit my year 11 semester two report for documentation? That's a really good question. I'm glad that someone asked. So um, with the year 11 results, there are certain formats or grading systems that we would accept. Uh, if your grading system, like the, the grading system your school provided is one of the acceptable grading systems, then we can use your year 11 school report to generate a selection rank. But if your year school report, uh, your school results is graded in a format that we don't accept, then in that case, you must complete a year 11 supplementary form. Um, it's again, the template is on our website. It also lists all of the acceptable grading systems. So make sure you check that. If it's not one of that, the, those accepted grading system, complete the supplementary form, upload the supplementary form to your application as well as your school report. Uh, having both two of the documents would assist us when assessing your application. So for example, for IB, if you, your grading system is one, two, seven, 
or A2E or 125, then that's fine. Just upload your year school report and we can just assess them and make sure it includes two semesters. Or if your IB school does just provide one report, one, one report for two semesters, that's also okay. Just making sure that it's very clear the report does include a year worth of results. I've just, I'll, I'll put the, um, the link for that supplementary form into the chat for anyone who um, may need it. Uh, yeah. So nice, easy question. Next. Sorry. <laughs> what degrees are eligible for year 11 offers for, for the earlier um, offers? Uh, what degree, all degrees. So all of our, our programs will be part of the uh, early offer process. So make sure, again, you know, whatever you wanted to study the most, put that as your highest of preference so it can be considered. Also look at our websites, the Programs and Courses website, which lists the 2022 minimum requirements. Although, you know, some of our programs um, have limited places, that does mean meeting the minimum requirements do not, does not guarantee an offer to the program. But minimum requirements is like the actual lowest requirements will be confirmed at the time of the offer, but you must meet the minimum requirements in order to be considered. So that is a good guidance when you are putting um, the order of your preferences, uh, check what is the requirements for each of that degree. Great. Um, this is an old favorite. So I would like to submit two flexible double law degrees um, in my preferences. On the application process, it doesn't allow to um, selection of the flexible double law twice. Um, do you want to explain how that works? Because I know this is a question that we get quite a lot. Yes. So, you know, it's flexible. <laughs> so what that means is you don't need to confirm the two degrees when you apply. So it's flexible. You can change whichever combination you wanted to at any time between the application and your final acceptance. So if, for example, like you've listed here, development studies and international relations, if you're not sure which one, that's okay. Nominate one of them uh, when you apply. And then when you accept your final offer in December, January, that's when you have to confirm the two degrees that you were, wanted to study uh, for the semester. And even after you commenced, for example, the law degree with international relations and halfway or after one semester, you realize you're not interested in the international relations, you wanted to study development studies, then that's fine. We have internal transfer process. You can apply for internal transfer uh, after a semester or after a year, depending on your uh, selection rank then you can be transferred into a different combination. So, so there are a lot of options. Uh, you don't have to confirm that now. For the application, you can only have one flexible double law as a preference, but you can have flexible double art or flexible double engineering. So each of the group, just one preference. Great. Um, so the next question, are offers subject to HSC results? I guess that's, that's coming back to the, the, what conditions are there on those August offers? So it depends on, I guess, you know, whether you just want to uh, get your early offer confirmed because early offer will be based on your year 11 results. So if we are just looking at confirming your year 11, or your early offer, then the only condition is you complete your year 12 within ATAR. If you've changed your order of preferences and you wanted to consider it for a different program, then of course we will look at the better of the year 11 and the year 12 results. So if your ATAR is better than year 11, then you know end of year you have another opportunity to be considered for a different program. Great. Um, if I'm in New South Wales, do I need to submit my year 11 results or do you find, does the ANU find them for us? <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> so um, 
New South Wales applicants, because we have access to uh, results directly from um, the source, so you don't need to upload any Year 11 results uh, if you are studying a New South Wales curriculum in New South Wales. But if you are doing IB in New South Wales, then you need to make sure you upload your IB Year 11 results. And same for, uh, like for all other states, um, you will need to upload your year 11 results to your application. Um, but you don't need to worry too much on this one because once you submit your application, um, the system will tell you whether you need to upload your year 11 results as part of the application. Great. So this question here, are we able to go to the next page of the application form without completing the previous page and then be able to go back um, and complete that? I think it depends on whether the question is a mandatory question you must answer. If that's the case, you will need to complete that question, unfortunately, um, before you go to next section. Um, but you can change the details, you know, before you submit the application. Yeah, I, sp I suppose if you were trying to like race through the application to fill everything in, you could you could put a placeholder value in there. You can go on to the rest of the form. Just don't hit submit until you've checked everything and make sure it's all correct. That's <laughs> right. <the> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for, for one of the equity considerations for family disruption, does this need to be a disruption just in the HSC year or how far back can it go? So we're looking at year 11 and year 10, or year, sorry, year 11 and 12, right? So it doesn't have to be year 12. Um, so again, I would recommend you have a look at the details of the criteria about the duration, because some of the categories does look at duration as well. Um, so before you submit any uh, supporting documentation. But overall, it doesn't have to be HSA year. That's right. Yeah. Um, are the minimum ATARs for each course published on the website most likely to stay to be the same for this coming year? So as the minimum requirements are the same, um, but because some of the programs only have limited places, so that means it depends on how many applicants apply and how what what ranks they have. Uh, and how many places we have, that will then determine the lowest selection rank uh, that we can make an offer to. So we, we wouldn't know until it actually happens at the time of offer. But in order to be considered, you need to have the minimum, uh, require, minimum selection rank for that particular program. Great. Um... So I'll, I'll answer this one very quickly. For the section where you provide income details, is this just your own personal income or does your parents' income come into this? So this, this is about your personal income. This is really obviously relating to that, um, that accommodation thing. So it's just yours, not your parents. They wanna know how much you're earning. So in most cases, it's very unlikely that you're gonna reach that threshold. Um, it's just a requirement of the application form. What I would say is if you are applying for accommodation, um, we are running a specific session that will be all about accommodation and that and what needs to go into that part of the application. Um, so that's in a couple of weeks on the 31st of March. Um, so I definitely recommend if you are, if you were really thinking about accommodation um, to come to that session because we can go into more detail about um, that section. But yeah, for those income details, it's all about your own personal earnings. Um, here's a great question. If year 11 results, what if year 11 results weren't great and you expect to do a lot better in year 12? No problem. We will consider you for the end of the year based on the better of the two uh, results. So if your year 12 results are better, we will consider your application based on your year 12 results when your year 12 results release. So that's in December or January. So your application will be considered again. Um, well, this is a, a good question too. Given COVID, um, when it hit, a number of co-curricular activities were put on hold. Um, 
So will documentary evidence relating to a prior year be acceptable? Yes, so for co-curricula, we actually look at year 10, year 11, and year 12. So, uh, you know, if the activities you did earlier, <coughs> sorry, uh, that can also be considered as well. Uh, some of them do require, um, like, the commitment levels, like, for example, duration, six months or the minimum hours. So again, make sure you look at the website and to look at each of the categories and see if you meet the requirement. Um, if you think of the documentary evidence that you are going to get um, is not going to meet the requirements, then you can use a, this, the declaration form, again, published on our website, uh, that would assist us when assessing your application as well. Sorry. Um, no, that's fine. And the, there's another uh, one relating to your results. So if we do not receive an early offer um, after applying directly, will our application be reconsidered in December based on year 12? And do we need to reapply again? Um, or do you re reconsider by default? Um, do you want to talk about that as well? <coughs> Um, yeah. Yes, sure. So your application will be considered again in December or January, depending on when your results are available. You don't need to reapply. So if you want it to be uh, considered again based on your year 12, just make sure that, you know, you have authorised the release of the results to us. Uh, or if you want to change the order of your preferences, you can do that as well. It's all within one direct application. Do not apply via um, University Mission Centre for the same program you already applied within ASA, uh, within the direct application, sorry. So it will be uh, valid or active for the whole duration. It will be considered right. by default. That's right. Yeah. Um, this is a good question because we do know this is an ongoing um, thing as well. If you are an interstate student and couldn't put your student number into the application, um, do you have to supply your ATAR and results to get them in December? Um, or can a new access? This is sort of, I, I guess, three different parts of, of a question, but do you want to just summarise again? Yes. <laughs> Uploading sure. results and, and that student number. Yeah, sure. So um, if you don't have the student number or if you have the student number but don't have the pink, don't worry. Leave that uh, section of the question blank um, and we, we and continue application. For the end of the year results, um, we should be able to get it directly from the uh, University Admission Centre, uh, which will get the re results from other texts. Um, so you don't, again, you don't need to upload any year 12 results uh, to your application, uh, unless it's year 12 enrollments for prerequisite assessments, we do need that information. Then uh, for IB, International Baccalaureate, um, you need to make sure that you nominate ANU and the University Admission Centre uh, as the, uh, the uh, organisation or institution that can receive your IB results. If you don't authorise release of the results to us, then we won't be able to get that from IBO. In that case, then there will be a delay in finalising the assessment of your application. So that's more for the end of the year um, process. Great. Um, that's pretty much up to time for us. I do know there are quite a few questions here um, that we haven't addressed individually. Um, but hopefully you've gotten um, a lot of the information you need. Uh, as I've said, um, we are running a series of webinars. So if we have missed anything, you will have more opportunities to find out about um, the admissions process, um, about scholarships and accommodation. Um, next week, uh, the session will be about the different study options. So we will actually have each of our academic colleges um, there to answer questions. So if you do have questions about a particular degree, um, that's your opportunity to, to come along and ask. Um, this session has been recorded. So once we um, have downloaded that recording, um, we will be able to make that available to you. Um, but other than that, we 
Hope you've enjoyed the session. We hope you've gotten a lot out of it. Um, please get in touch with the university if you have any ongoing questions. Um, otherwise, we hope to see you at um, future webinars and eventually at the ANU. Thank you all for coming along. I just have one thing, sorry, because I know there's yep. quite a number of uh, questions that we haven't addressed. Uh, you can always talk to us, like either our future students team or recruitment team or the domestic admissions team. Um, so you can contact us by email, domestic.admissions at anu.edu.au, because some of the uh, questions I think we would we, we should be uh, best positioned to answer. So in some of those I can see um, we don't have the details, so we can't really respond to. Please do get in touch and with us so we can address these uh, questions and you can submit your application. Great. Um, yeah, certainly if you have any ongoing questions, as I said, we've got all these, um, these sessions coming up in, in the coming weeks. I do know we'll have another admission session, um, uh, quite a few actually, uh, next month through April and May. So um, yes, please keep in contact with the university um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you at one of our future sessions as well. Thank you all. Thank you everyone. Bye.